This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to Scripture. Spread the Lord's upon me, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recover my sight to the blind, said at liberty, them that are brute. The word is not even in your heart, in your mouth, is a word of faith, which I preach, you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, that God, has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved, with the heart man believing, unto righteousness, and the mouth, confession, is made, unto salvation. I'm not ashamed, of the gospel of Christ, it is the power of God under salvation, everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone that's receiving this, <clears throat> pardon me, live stream, Roku, Amen, YouTube and other devices. Welcome, Paul Peters, my co-host, on the set with me. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Amen. I'm going to talk about the Davids. They, I knew, years ago, as a small boy, they were the most God-fearing family I ever heard of. There wasn't a family anywhere like them. The Millers, which my mother was a Miller, and my grandfather's father was a cowardman in the Civil War for years. Preachers, school teachers, educators, and their family. God bearing? No. The Davis amazed me. My grandfather, Luther Albert, grandmother, Georgiana, my aunt, Neva, the oldest sister of that, her husband, Uncle Claude, who died when he was 100 years old in the 90s. Uh, Uncle Floyd, 10 years older than that. Uh, that Belma was less God bearing. Ethel, I never was sure. Lyle, God bearing. James, less than that. Carl, a God bearing man. Amazing. And I never understood it. I knew where my great grandfather's farm was. I knew it was a fairly large barn. I knew, well, I found out that it grew at 100 acres 
a strawberries, he was a fruit grower, a cattleman, a landowner, a carpenter, a house builder, and houses that he built very nice. I knew that, but I didn't know until a few years ago he died of tetanus. And when I heard that, actually that was in the 2000s, oh, after 2010, when I found out he died of tetanus, I shuddered. I was a veterinarian. I attended a lot of horses. And I recall a couple of horses with that. And at a point, we euthanized them because they were such torment and torture. They died, drowned in their own blood. Horrible to watch. Difficult for a, a hard veterinarian to watch. Then I find out my great grandfather dies in tetanus, two thousand, pardon me, nineteen. 11, August, I found that out in the last prayer for whatever's been. Frankly, I didn't even want to think about him dying. I bet. He was described by his own family as a tough man, hard. He was noted for his plain, rugged honesty. Amen. Another friend of James Madison says, I have known Jim Davidson for over 40 years, and a more honest, upright man never lived. That's pretty much Davidson's, all of them's reputation. Amen. But to think about him dying, the way he died. Only the last few days have I overcome what he went through. His children, most of them, gathered at his bedside before he died, maybe all of them. I knew more than half of his children. I knew his oldest daughter. The last time I saw her, she was 95 years old. California, 1952. Amen. Also, saw his youngest daughter at the same time. Southern California. 
Dio cade. E beh, ora si chiama. I do some of his sons, well, at, at least two I know, really good carpenters. Henry and Leflin. He had one, youngest, on the grocery store, Southeast County. A large store. A woman that worked for him for 25 years told my oldest sister that people would come in to the store with no money. He'd give them a basket, fill it up. It's free. Never forget him. Amen. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to tell you about the fear of God in Luther Albert, my grandfather. Heart, his wife, his children. When my great grandfather James Madison died, my grandfather's oldest, Neva, 16, ranged to 18 months. Carl was the youngest, 18 months old. James Three, loud, four and a half. Not that. They all were there. But let me tell you, my grandmother, a loaded road builder in Missouri, a man, One day he said, I can no longer get these road contracts like I've been getting them. That meant what I know about most business. Paola, and he quit. Fifty years old. Amen. And fifty had a draft horse. Hundred and sixty miles long. And they went southwest to Zarkov. Amen. When James Madison died in 1911, August, it had a great effect on the whole family. I'm sure it affected Aunt Neva, 12 years older than that. She got saved, born again. She was a Northern Methodist. I'm not sure what year Neva and Claude were born again or saved, but it's recorded in 1990. Her, Neva and Claude drove a wagon from Sarcoxy to Independence, Kansas with an A-frame 
taking their furniture to work on the farm of Thor of Hope Orphanage in the Finnish Kansas. Sometime before that, they were saved. I'm not sure when. Sometime after a year or two, three, I don't know, they quit. But when Benjamin Young died, I believe it was 1925, Uncle Claude and Eva went back and managed Door of Oak Orphanage in the Venice County. At one time, I thought that I needed a farm and raise young boys. Well, that didn't materialize. That far more than a bar. Yes, I'm the spiritual father of a lot of young boys and young girls and older men and women worldwide. I'm begotten through the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're everywhere in the world. What a blessing that came about because God said James Madison Davidson you are my child and you're going to suffer death but you're going to receive my son Jesus while you're dying or somewhere in there, I am convinced by the Spirit of God that's what happened. And the rest of the family, Luther, my granddad, his family, followed the Lord. My dad said in the 90s, I wish I'd have believed God like you do. I say, come on, Dad. You believe God when I didn't even want to. Amen. James Madison has something written about him, his farm, or whatever. Paul Peters is going to read. Catherine Gurrier supplied it, and where it's from, Paul will tell you. It's from the History of Jasper County, Missouri, written 1883. James M. Davidson, farmer and stock raiser, post office, Sarcoxy, was born in Macoupin County, Illinois, December 8, 1834. His parents, Joshua and Elizabeth Davidson, were natives of Virginia. James, Ma James Madison was the tenth of 18 children. He was raised on a farm, receiving limited education in the common school, also learned the trade of carpentry. Came to Jasper County, 1867, where he now lives on a October 27th of that year. Mr. Davidson was married in McCoupin County, Illinois, March 18, 1858, 
to Miss Louisa M., daughter of James and Louisa Norville of that county. From this union, there are 12 children, Navina E., born May 1859, Melissa E., born November 1860, Castilla A., born September 1862, and infant David, born September 1863, deceased, Ida M., born April 1865, Elmer J., born April 1867, James C., born April 1869, Henry E., born January 1872, Luther A., born February 1874, Leofwin, born May 1876, Cypress P., born October 1878, and Grace, born December 1881. Mr. and Mrs. Davidson are members of the Methodist Church. James Madison is a member of the AOUW, which is the Ancient Order of United Workmen. He's also a member of the P of H, which is the National Grange of the Order of Patrons of Husbandry. He has a splendid farm of 260 acres, well fenced, in fine cultivation, good residence, barn, and other outbuildings, the yard is set with shade and ornamental trees. Mr. D is a man of good business qualifications and takes great interest in matters educational, political, and otherwise. That's for our king. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Psalm 55, verse 19. Says there are no, there are no changes. Because there's no fear of God in them. Did you know that's the problem with the world? No fear of God. Therefore, they don't change. I thank God for what happened to my great grandfather and the fear. It put in the Davidson family. And some of it rubbed off on me. I will tell you, I didn't have the fear that I should have had. No way. But God had mercy on me and grace. And he brought me to him. And he taught me the fear of the Lord. I will tell you what it cost me. It cost me everything I own. Two farms, veterinary hospital, Veterinary practice, some good show horses, some good registered cattle, some great cattle, my reputation, and when I was 30, Six years old. I had three hundred fifty dollars. A car, two dogs, and a horse. Hey, Amen. That's what it cost me. Amen. Everything, including my life. I had to lay my life down. But thank God. I'm glad and I found grace in the sight of God. Amen. 
at 36, bro, I wasn't one bit afraid. Not one bit. For one, almost one year, well, for about seven months, I knew God was going to do something with me. I didn't know what. In early 1977, walking on a road in Carrollton, Texas, speaking Isaiah 41, 10 and 11. You might read that. I'm headed there now. Thank you. God made these promises to me. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will, uh, I will help thee. Yea, I will... Uh, thank God. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. You know what? After... Repeating that for, I don't know, two or three months, every morning walking, I'd walk four miles to east and two back west to my lease residence in Carrollton. He said, back to McKinney. My goodness, that's where I started my practice in 1963, actually, but my own in 64. I was ready. It's never stopped. Blessings have never stopped. Prosperity has never stopped. Divine help for the past 23 years. Amen. It cost me, friends. It'll cost you. Everything, but look what you get in return. So, I want to encourage all of you to whatever it takes, give yourself to the Lord, trust in Him, offer your bodies a living. Sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12. First time I read that, I said, You call this reasonable? God does. And he's what counts. Today, I'm 83. Strong. Healthy, ready for war, without a doubt. War in the spirit, body for God's people. Don't faint in my tribulations, they're for your honor. Visions 3 13. Amen. Thank God. What's that? It is 11.30. Thank God. Well, you got anything to say? No, I do not. You know, I got young men and women, girls and boys, young, that I once thought I should have um, a farm and I could teach them responsibility. Did you know that 
David bade Israel from the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. I'm not sure where that's at. Isaiah, I mean, Psalm, Psalm 78. 78, right, okay. You want to read that? Sure. Psalm 78, verse 70. He chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From fawn the ewes great with young, he brought to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Thank you. That's exactly what I've done with the body of Christ. All these 45 years, raising me up, training me, proving me, humbling me, to see if I keep his commandments and to show me what was in my heart. Deuteronomy 8 wasn't always pretty what was in my heart. God didn't say it. He chose me because what was in my heart was pretty. He chose me because he made me for the job, ugly as all, that no flesh glory in his presence. Then, hallelujah, thank God, amen, thank God. My friends, we need number seven. Only to be named, right? Right. Let's have it, then I'll talk more. All right. Amen. Graves will never 
you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. <laughs>